Good morning, good afternoon, or maybe good evening, wherever you are. It's good afternoon from here. And anyone in the Americas, good morning. Now, my role here today as a success advisor is we're always trying to come up with different ideas of how we can serve you guys, how we can give you some more value, even outside the events that we normally do. So I thought no better way than studying daily one of Bob's favorite books, Power of Awareness. Bob absolutely loved the power of awareness. He loved all of Neville's teachings and he taught quite a lot of them in our programs like Inner Circle, Masterclass. And I thought, you know, this is one of my study materials that I use every day. So why not break it down from my perception and from my awareness and give you guys, you know, how I study, study in the same way. And it will give you some idea of what way us success advisors here at PGA actually do study every morning. You know, the concept of reading a book from front cover to back cover, putting it back on the bookshelf and moving on to the next book. It's not the way we study here. And the reason being is it's not the way Bob studied. Bob studied completely different. Bob would have studied sometimes one extract, which was maybe four or five lines for a year. And I don't exaggerate when I say that. I've seen Bob studying the one paragraph for a very long time. And him and Sandy done this quite regularly. You know, they would have picked one extract from the power of awareness or from maybe one of other Bob's mentors, Thomas Trard, and, you know, studied it for maybe six months to one year until that extract or that paragraph or maybe that chapter of a book it was actually inside him, not put back on the bookshelf. So that's the way we encourage everyone that's studying our material, our philosophies to study. Study it the way Bob studied it. Study it the way we study it here at PGA. So as I said, I thought no better way to give you guys more value than study my personal book. And as you can see, it's falling to pieces. Like Bob's Think and Grow Rich book, mine's has fallen to pieces, my power of awareness. It's with me everywhere I go. And I do a lot of traveling. I'd be in a lot of different countries and I never go anywhere without my power of awareness book. So what I did think about doing was I sat for a few days thinking, what's the best way to do this? Because we're going to be doing it on a daily basis. And I think we're probably going to continue this right up until maybe around Christmas time. We're in the middle of a really strong, powerful 90 day sprint at the moment within the Institute. So I thought, why not get you guys to join this 90 day sprint also? We're probably around 15 days into it already. So we've got a good 70, 75 days left of this sprint. So I do encourage you all join daily, you know, join my Facebook group. If you don't get on the live calls, my Facebook group will have the daily recordings up. So if you can't join them, you know, I highly encourage you to get into the Facebook group. I will pop a link in sometime this week or even sometime before today is out. And, you know, I highly encourage you to jump, jump on the Facebook group. Lots more value and you will get the recordings that you don't get every day. So everyone is here for a different reason. You know, we're all here because we want to better ourselves. We're all here because we want to learn more. And that includes me. That includes everyone at Proctor Gogger Institute, including all the success advisors. We're all here to raise our vibrations, you know, change our attitude. But the most important thing we're here to do, which is the most important thing that we can teach at Proctor Gogger Institute, is to change your thinking. Change the way you think and change the whole concept of yourself. And that's what Neville really takes a deep dive into here in the power of awareness. It's changing your awareness, changing how you think about you. Because how you think about you is how you attract things into your life. Okay, and we're going to go a hell of a lot deeper than that in this very deep study of the power of awareness. Now, as I said, I've been thinking for a few days what way to do this. And like Bob always says, you know, never read a book from cover to cover. So I'm not going to read it from cover to cover. I'm going to go intuitively how I feel every day, what's going to be the best extract to read, what's going to be the best chapter to go to. So don't expect it to be read like a normal book, cover to cover. We'll be jumping. And some days we'll be going back to what we studied previous days. So I'll be going intuitively of what it is I think is going to be best to study. Now, today is day number one of week number one. And as I said, we'll probably do this for around 70 days. And what it's going to do is it's going to teach you how to, how to become more aware. It's going to teach you how to have a completely different concept of yourself. And we will get right into it here. And as I said, we're all here for a different reason, each and every one of you. And what I do want you to do before we even start this, and I do this at the start of all my coaching calls, all my teaching calls, I want you to just take a little second 
take three, four, five seconds and just close your eyes and just take yourself to the version of the person who you have on your goal card. I'm sure each and every one of you have a goal card by this stage. Some people may be new to Bob's material. Some people are here quite a lot, but every one of you should have a goal card. And if you don't, I highly encourage you to get one from today on, even if it's just a piece of paper. Now, what you have written on that goal card, that's the person that you desire to be. That's the person that you've always desired to be. So I want you to take yourself to that place, to that place, and who is that version of me? Because that's the version of you that I want to show up to these calls. That's the shoes that I want you to be in when you appear to these calls. Not from your current level of awareness and not the current how you feel about yourself. I want you to come as that strong, powerful version of you that is on that goal card, who has already achieved everything that you desire. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's just get right into it. And Neville, as I said, Neville was one of Bob's go-to mentors. You know, he absolutely loved all of Neville's teachings, studied it quite a lot. And this book is from 1952. And Neville at this stage had been studying these philosophies for around, I think it was around 30 years, maybe 20, 25 years. You know, the mid thirties is when Neville started these philosophies. So this book was written in 1952. So he had a lot to share at this stage. And chapter one, we're just gonna get right into it. Chapter one, I am. All things when they are admitted are made manifest by the light. For everything that is made manifest is light. That alone we could study for hours. You know, what is Neville saying here? Universe, God, whatever you, and you will probably hear me use the word God throughout this. Some people may not resonate with it. You can replace that with universe, but I will be using the same as what Neville uses. And, you know, what he's saying here is everything that is made manifest is light. Light is everything. Universe is everything. We are all part of that one. Every single one of us. The light is consciousness. Consciousness is one. Manifesting in legions of forms or levels of consciousness. There is no one that is not all that is for consciousness though expressed in an infinite series of levels, is not divisional. You know, that's such a powerful concept. There is no one that is not all. You know, every one of us have to understand that we are all. We are all part of that divine consciousness, all part of source, universe, God. You know, and there's no one that's not all of it. There's no one that's not the same as anyone else. There is no real separation or gap in consciousness. I am cannot be divided. And this is where anyone that knows Bob teachings, he always had a graph of the levels of frequencies. He always referred to that. And that's exactly what this is. There is no separation. You know, every single one of those frequencies, every single one of those consciousness, they're all connected. There is no gap in any of it. So what Neville's saying here is there is no separation or gap in consciousness. I am cannot be divided. That source, that one source cannot be divided. I may conceive myself to be a rich man, a poor man, a beggar man, or a thief. But the center of my being remains the same, regardless of the concept I hold of myself. I may conceive myself to be a rich man, a poor man, a beggar man, or a thief. But the center of my being remains the same, regardless of the concept I hold of myself. Now that, and this is something I may do throughout these studies. I may dip into other books that resonate with the same you know, paragraph that we're on. This takes me right to one of Bob's studies that he always talked about. I may conceive myself to be a rich man, a poor man, a beggar man, or a thief, but the center of my being, the center, remember that, the center of my being remains the same, regardless of the concept I hold of myself. So regardless of how you hold yourself, regardless of the consciousness that you're currently in, the center of your being never changes. That one source 
universe, God. And that paragraph I was speaking about just now, you know, this is from uh, Thomas Troward, the Dory Lectures. Bob always read this. My mind is a center of divine operation. The divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. And this means the production of something beyond what has gone before. Something entirely new, not included in the past experience, though proceeding out of it by an orderly sequence of growth. Now let's just go back to that first line. My mind is a center of divine operation. What does that mean? You know, the power in that one line on its own. Center of divine operation, every one of us, me and every single person on this call, every single person on this planet is the center of that divine operation. You know, if you imagine that room that you're sitting in now, each and every one of us, there's a center point to that room you're in. You know, you could measure it very precisely with the right instruments. But when we talk about source and about universe, there is no center. It's infinite. There is absolutely no way of measuring it. But each and every one of us, because it's infinite, we are the center of that divine operation. And when we start changing the concept of ourselves and realizing how much power we actually have and start operating from that version who we have on that gold card, that is such a big concept. Therefore, since the divine cannot change, its inherent nature, it must operate in the same manner with me. Consequently, in my own special world of which I am the center, it will move forward to produce new conditions, always in advance of any that have gone before. Now, I will put that one into the chat also because I would love everyone to study that for a long time. Let's go back to Neville. So, I may concede myself to be a rich man, a poor man, a beggar man, or a thief, but the center of my being remains the same, regardless of the concept I hold of myself. And each one of you all here are holding yourself to a concept, a different concept. Every single one of you. At the center of manifestation, there is only one I am. And we are that one. We are all that one, each and every one of us. There is only one center, one origin. I am manifesting in legions of forms or concepts of itself. And I am that I am. I am that I am. So what are you choosing to be? What concept are you choosing to hold yourself to? How do you see yourself? I am that I am. So however you see yourself, that is how you are. I am is the self-definition of the absolute. The foundation on which everything rests. I am is the first cause substance and only cause substance. Let me read that again. I am is the first cause substance and it's the only cause substance there only is one source whatever way you see that source there only is one source i am is the self-definition of god or universe i am hath sent me unto you i am that i am be still and know that i am god And then he goes on to say, I am is a feeling of permanent awareness. Now that word, that one word permanent, let me just read that again. I am is the feeling of permanent awareness. Now, each and every one of you are in a state of awareness at the moment. And you can only be in one state at any one time. You can't be in two different states. But look at that word permanent. I am is a feeling of permanent awareness. But that state you're in at this moment in time, that isn't permanent. 
you can change that state at any one time. You can change how you feel at any one time. So I am is a feeling of permanent awareness. Now, I am is going to be what comes after that I am is going to be this state of awareness that you're in. So if you're thinking in, let's say, lack or limitation, and you're feeling, I can't get what's on that goal card. That's what you're affirming to yourself after the statement, I am. Or if you don't feel worthy, you, know, you can change that state. Change the state that you're in. That's the power we have in our thinking. That's the power we have in our reasoning faculty. Now, the very center of consciousness is the feeling of I am. I may forget who I am, where I am, what I am, but I cannot forget that I am. Let's just read that again. I may forget who I am, where I am, what I am, but I cannot forget that I am. And if you listen to that first page we just wrote, wrote or listened to, you know, that's given a very clear indication of what Neville's explaining of who I am is. You're the center of everything. You're the center of the universe, center of God, everything. Now, the state of consciousness that you're in, that's where he's saying here, I may forget who I am. So if you're in a state of lack or limitation, I may forget where I am or what I am, but I cannot forget that I am because that's never going to change. That is never going to change. No matter what state you're in, the center of you, the spirit, the soul, subconscious, that is I am. The awareness of being remains regardless of the degree of forgetfulness of who, where, and what I am. And that's just exactly what we were saying. The awareness, the state of being remains. Look at that word remains. Remains regardless of the degree of forgetfulness. So no matter what path you're on at this moment in time, no matter what path, how you feel at this moment, the state that you're in, the consciousness that you're in at this moment in time, that center, that being, that spiritual perfectness remains it doesn't go anywhere. It remains, regardless of the degree of forgetfulness of who, where, and what I am. I am, and this is the root source. We'll continue to talk about that. It's the one and only source. Is that which, amid unnumbered forms, is ever the same. I am is that which, amid unnumbered forms, and that unnumbered forms, there's unlimited amount of forms. You know, no matter how many different states of consciousness you've been in, and, you know, no matter how many different realms and, you know, spiritual beings we have been, you know, that unnumbered forms, it always comes back to I am. There only was, is one I am. So no matter what form you're in, whether it's in this realm or a different realm, the state of consciousness that you're in, you're always going to be I am. And that is that source of oneness. This great discovery of cause reveals that good or bad, man is actually the arbiter of his own fate. And that, and that is his concept of himself that determines the world in which he lives. Let me just go over that again. This great discovery of cause reveals that good or bad, man is actually the arbiter of his own fate. And that it is his concept of himself that determines the world in which he lives. And that's back to the state that you're in. The state that you're in determines the world in which you live. And lots of people don't like to hear that, you know, that you're creating your results. Your results are being created from the state you're in. So this great discovery of cause reveals that good 
or bad, man is actually the arbiter of his own fate and that it is his concept of himself, how you see yourself, that determines the world in which you live. In other words, if you're experiencing ill health, knowing the truth about cause, you cannot attribute the illness to anything other than to the particular arrangement of the basic cause substance. And that's the frequency, the vibration, you know, the consciousness that you're in. An arrangement which is defined by your concept, I am unwell. This is why you're told, let the weak man say, I am strong. Joel 3.10. For by his assumption, the cause substance, I am, is rearranged and must, therefore, manifest that which its rearrangement affirms. Let's just go over that again. This is why you're told, let the weak man say, I am strong. Affirmations is one of the most powerful thing that you can do to change your state. As I said, every single one of us here are in a particular state at any one time. You can't be in two different states. Now, if you're in a state of uh, unwell or feelings, you know, lack and limitation, that you're not worthy of the wealth that you desire, you can change that concept of yourself through affirmations. By changing your state through affirmations, how powerful is that? This is why you're told that the weak man say, I am strong. Now, if you're saying the opposite of that, I am weak, I feel unwell, you know, I am unwell. You're affirming the same thing over and over and over to yourself. So I am is rearranged and must therefore manifest that which its rearrangement affirms. This principle governs every aspect of your life, be it social, financial, intellectual, or spiritual. So you can condition the I am based on what you're saying to yourself. This principle governs every, every aspect of your life. So if it's more financial gain you're looking for, if it's health, you're looking for maybe it's a relationship you know maybe it's a re relationship with yourself how you feel about yourself you can condition that and change that condition through what you're telling yourself through what you're affirming to yourself because as neville says here i am is rearranged and must therefore manifest that which its rearrangement affirms so how are you seeing yourself? What are you saying to yourself? I am is that reality to which whatever happens, we must turn for an explanation of the phenomena of life. It is I am's concept of itself that determines the form and scenery of its existence. Everything depends upon its attitude towards itself. That which it will not affirm as true of itself cannot awaken in this world. Let's read that again. I am's concept of itself that determines the form and scenery of its existence. Everything Everything depends upon its attitude towards itself. That which it will not affirm as true of itself cannot awaken in its word. You know, that state that you desire, the goals that you desire, you know, that needs a certain consciousness. You have to be on the consciousness of that goal. You have to see yourself as that person who has that goal. But unless you think and take yourself to that vibration 
and onto that consciousness of that version of you, then it will not awaken in its world. It will not awaken in its world. So that state that you're in, you know, is it happy? Is it sad? Is it a rich state? Is it a poor state? Are you feeling angry? Are you feeling passionate? Whatever that state is you're feeling, that's what you're manifesting. That's what you're bringing into form. So whatever it is you desire, unless you think and get to that state of consciousness, then it cannot awaken in this world. That is your concept of yourself, such as, I am strong. I am secure. I am loved. Determines the world in which you live. In other words, when you say, I am a man, I am a father, I am an American, you're not defining different I ams. You're defining different concepts or arrangements of the one cause substance. The one I am. Even in the phenomena of nature, if the tree were to articulate, it would say, I am a tree, an apple tree, a fruitful tree. When you know that consciousness is the only, or sorry, is the one and only reality, conceiving itself to be something good, bad, or indifferent, and becoming that which it conceives itself to be, you are free from the tyranny of second causes, free from the belief that there are causes outside of your own mind that can affect your life. Now, let's go back over that. When you know, when you know that consciousness is the one and only reality, that state of consciousness that you're in, that's the only state of reality at this moment in time, conceiving itself to be something good, bad, or indifferent, and becoming that which it conceived itself to be, you're free from the tyranny of second causes, free from the belief that there are causes outside of your own mind that can affect your life. Let's go to those two words, second causes. What does Neville mean by second causes? Anything that's outside of you. Anything that is outside your thinking, outside of your mind. Your thinking and your attitude is the only two things that you can control. And that's all based on the consciousness that you're in. Anything outside that is the second cause. Now, when you're, you're free from the tyranny of second causes, free from the belief that there are causes outside of your own mind that can affect your life. Now, that's a big concept. And some people, like I said at the beginning of the teaching, some people don't like to hear that, that things outside of their, you know, a lot of people think that the results that they're getting is based on outside circumstances. You know, they blame the weather, they blame the people they're surrounding themselves with, they blame their role in their, their job or their business, they blame their clientele or their customers. None of that is to blame for any result that we get in life. None of it. Our state of consciousness is everything. That's what's determining everything in our life. So anything outside of your own mind cannot affect your life. Only the state that you're in. In the state of consciousness of the individual is found the explanation of the phenomena of life. If man's concept of himself were different, everything in his word would be different. His concept of himself being what it is, everything in his word must be as it is. I'll just repeat that. In the state of consciousness of the individual is found the explanation of the phenomena of life. If man's concept of himself were different, everything in his word would be different. Everything would change. When you change your state, change your thinking. Everything in his world would be different. Let me just... 
on to another little book that Neville, Neville wrote called Mental Diets. You know, to explain that even deeper of what Neville's saying here, he puts it very well in this little book. Talking to oneself is a habit everyone indulges in. We could no more stop talking to ourselves than we could stop eating and drinking. All that we can do is control the nature and the direction of our inner conversations. Most of us are totally unaware of the fact that our inner conversations are the causes of the circumstances of our life. And he goes on to say, we are told that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But do we know that man's thinking follows the tracks laid down in his own inner conversations? To turn the tracks to which you're tied in the direction in which you want to go. You must put off your former conversation, which is called in the Bible, the old man, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now, speech is the image of mind. Therefore, to change your mind, to change your state, you must first change your speech. And by speech, is meant those mental conversations we carry on with ourselves. You know, so be careful of the conversations you're having with yourself. That's what's creating the state that you're in. That's creating the, con the consciousness and the state that you're in at any moment in time, which can work for you or can work against you. So if you're thinking of what you don't want, then you're in that state. You're in a state of a low frequency. You're in a low state of vibration. But if you're thinking from, like we said at the start of the call, from the state of the person who already has our goals, the person who has already got everything we desire, you're taking yourself to a higher frequency, to that much higher vibration. And that's when you're changing your state. So you can do that at any moment in time. You can change your state. Now, his concept of himself being what it is, Everything in his word must be as it is. Thus, it is abundantly clear that there is only one I am. And you are that I am. Remember what Neville said at the start about one source, one God, universe, whatever that is that you resonate with. There only is one I am. And you're at the center of that source. And while I am is infinite, you, by your concept of yourself, are displaying only a limited aspect of the infinite I am. You know, through our thinking, we are the one keeping ourselves in shackles. We are the one keeping ourselves from what it is we desire. But we can take ourselves to that place. You know, we've got a beautiful imagination that can take us right to that place. And Neville goes you know, into imagination in this book. So we will be covering it. But through our imagination, our beautiful gift from God, we can take ourselves to that place of having already achieved that goal, assuming that we already have that goal. And that's what's going to instantly change your state. That's what's going to remove the shackles that we place ourselves in through our thinking. Build the more stately mansions. Oh, my soul. As the swift seasons roll, leave thy low vaulted past. Let each new temple nobler than the last. Shut thee from heaven with a dome more vast, till thou at length art free, leaving thine outgrown shell by life's unresting sea. Now, Build the more stately mansions. What Neville means here by stately mansions is states, states of consciousness, states of awareness. That's what Neville's talking about. Build the more stately mansions. Raise your awareness, oh my soul, as the, as the swift seasons roll. Leave thy low vaulted past. You know, these, as you build a bigger concept of yourself and you change your awareness, you change the state of drum, leave thy low vaulted past. Leave that old state behind. Let each new temple nobler than the last. 
So you're constantly raising that state, constantly building more stately mansions, nobler than the last. Shut thee from heaven with a dome more vast, till thou at length art free, leaving thine outgrown shell by life's unresting sea. That outgrown shell, that's the old you, that's the old state of consciousness, the old awareness. And as you grow and you build your awareness and grow, you know, that's when you're leaving the outgrown shell behind. That's what Neville's saying here. So build the more stately mansions. Change your states of consciousness. You know, that concludes chapter one. You know, this is the first day of, you know, I think we're going to be doing this for around 70 days, Monday to Friday. And I'm really excited to do this. As I said at the beginning of the call, we're always continually thinking, how can we conserve you guys better at Proctor Gallagher Institute? And I thought this was perfect. You know, a lot of people read Neville's Power of Awareness and each and every one of us are going to have a different concept of what Neville means here. I'm only taking it from my awareness and my perception. You know, you can accept or reject what I'm telling you, but it's going to be an exciting 70 days. You know, but from today, see yourself much bigger. You know, see yourself in a more stately mansion, a much bigger mansion. And that mansion that we're speaking about is a bigger version of you, a much higher concept of you. You know, see yourself much bigger today than what you were before we started this call. See yourself as that person who has everything they desire and leave the old story behind. I want everyone coming on these calls to come as that version of themselves and leaving the old version of themselves behind. We all have a story. Each and every one of us have a story. But we're all here to grow. Each and every one of us are here to grow, to get better. And we've got an opportunity to do that every single day. We've got an opportunity to grow and get better every day. It's a new opportunity every day. So every single day we join each other here, it's day one. It's not day two, day 10. Every day is day one. Because that's a new day and it's a new day to get better. So leave the old story behind and accept your perfection. Every single one of you have greatness within you. Every one of you. See yourself as that great version of you. See yourself in a stately mansion. And that does conclude lesson one. Listen, guys, thank you so much. As I said, you know, I see lots of new faces here and lots of familiar faces. So it's exciting. And anyone that doesn't join us every single day, like I said, join my Facebook group if you haven't already. The recordings will be in there daily. And, you know, let's do this for the next 70, I think it's 70 plus days, taking us right up to Christmas. Let's finish 2022, the strongest version of each and every one of us. Let's finish 2022 and set ourselves up to be in a much more stately mansion for 2023. So accept that idea right here and right now that you are that beautiful, perfect, great version of you that's inside trying to get out. And I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Have a great day, my friends. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. This is brilliant. Thank you. Bye.